Hi everyone and welcome back to my series of tutorials on introduction to R. This tutorial will mainly be an introduction to Tidyverse, but I'll also spend some time talking about packages and how to install and load them and even how to troubleshoot if you run into an error trying to install a package. Then I'll end the tutorial by using Tidyverse to answer a specific research question using the Penguins dataset from the Palmer Penguin package. As a reminder, these tutorials follow along with the blog post I wrote, which you can find on my website. And I have my website homepage opened up here. And if you go to blogs, you can go directly to the introduction to our blog. In the previous tutorial, we went through the first part, the first section of this blog. So today we'll start by, we can skip straight down and start with Tidyverse. When I first learned R, I learned um, just in base R because I actually didn't know about Tidyverse. But once I was introduced to Tidyverse, there was no going back. And now I use it pretty much every day with every script I write. And there is honestly so much I can say about Tidyverse and there's so much to learn. But unfortunately, I'll only be able to cover some of the basics with you today. However, I do provide some additional resources within my blog. So definitely please check out those resources. All right, so what is Tidyverse? Tidyverse is a collection of eight packages, which you can see I have listed here. And these were introduced by Hadley Wickham to help with data manipulation, exploration, and visualization. If you are new to programming, and this is your first programming language, you might be wondering what is a package? I like to think about a package as a collection of code, data, and documentation that are all bundled together in a standardized way that can be easily shared and installed by other users. So for example, if we want to check out more about the different packages within Tidyverse, we can go to the Tidyverse website and we can see all eight packages are listed here. Um, so for example, ggplot2 is great for creating graphs and visualizations. dplyr is great for data manipulation. So for example, if we click on one, we can see it even tells us some of the more common functions. Um, select, filter, and we'll actually use some of these within this tutorial later on. So pretty much in, if you want to take advantage of these incredible functions that other people have written, all we have to do is call, install and load Tidyverse because it will automatically load and install dplyr, so that gives us access to all of these functions. So that is why Tidyverse is so powerful, because by installing Tidyverse, you're actually installing all eight of these packages. Okay, so let's open up our studio and get started and work through installing and loading in Tidyverse. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is quickly create a new project. And now if you want um, a little bit more information about our projects, I definitely encourage you to go and watch the previous tutorial. So I'm just going to save this project straight on my desktop. And now we can see I'm working within my intro to our project and I'll just quickly create a markdown and call it Tidyverse. And this is the default script, so I'll just delete that. Even though I've called it Tidyverse, I still have to save this file. And you'll notice after I save it, it will appear within my files and directory over here. Okay, uh, awesome. So now we have my RMD file that we'll work on here. Okay, let's clear this. So when when you wanna work with a new package, the very first thing you have to do is make sure that you have it installed. So if it's your first time using the package, you'll have to install it on within RStudio. The way I do this is by, usually I will test this function out and go install packages. You really need to make sure 
So remember to put quotes here when you're installing packages and just type the package name in. I know I already have this package installed, but please, if this is your first time, hit enter and run this code. And when you install a package, you only have to do this step one time because R will remember that you've installed it. This is why I suggest doing it in the console because it's a one-time thing. Okay, so run that code and that should hopefully work. If it doesn't, make sure you have quotes and make sure you have spelled it correctly. Once you have a package installed, that's not enough to actually get it working within your script. So I start all of my scripts by having a chunk of code that loads all of the libraries or packages. So this is where I'll put all of the packages I want for this script. In order to load them, we'll use a function called library and we can just type in tidyverse. And you can see even before I finish typing it, it has popped up here. So I can just run this code now. And as long as you've installed it, this should this line of code should work. Here, when you're loading the, uh, the packages, you actually do not need to have them in quotes. As you can see here, this line of code worked and I don't, don't have tidyverse surrounded by quotes. So that's a little bit confusing at first, but try to remember when you're installing a package, it needs quotes, but when you're loading the package, it does not. Okay, so one cool thing about when you load tidyverse, it reminds you that it's actually attaching all of the eight packages that we saw before. So this is just a reminder that you don't have to actually load in ggplot2 or tibble or any of these. Just by this one line of code, we're loading and attaching all of these packages. Okay, so I've taught R to uh, uh, within a couple of beginner courses, and I've noticed a lot of times and this has happened to me as well, you try to install a package and it does not work. So on my blog, I go through an example trying to install a package called emo, which is short for emoji. So if we try to use our typical function, install packages in quotes and write emo, let's see what happens. Here we see some orange, that's not a great sign. So we get some warnings and it even says, um, package emo is not available for this version of R. So this actually might be a little bit confusing for a beginner because it makes it seem like, at least to me, that the version, your version of R is what is the problem here. But that's actually not the case. So one way, one thing that we can do to check out is go to this packages tab here. So these are all the packages from CRAN. Um, and in order to use the install packages, the package has to be part of the existing CRAN um, library. So in order to test this out, we can, we can test it by saying, okay, well, we wanted to install Tidyverse and that worked. So if we type in Tidyverse, we can see, yes, it's here, it's part of CRAN. But now we tried email. So if I type that in, we can see this is not here. So this is the issue. Emo is not part of the CRAN library, which is why it didn't work to use our install packages function. So this is a common problem because not all packages are part of CRAN. So now the question is, what do we do if we run into this issue? I typically go and just Google, Google these, Google this and for example, I'll just try Googling install emo package. And now you're typically looking for a GitHub page because if it's not on CRAN, chances are whoever developed the package has posted it onto their GitHub repository um, and they'll have instructions for you for how to install the package. So here we'll, we'll actually go to this first link. We can see Hadley has created this package. So this is the name of the repository. So we can click here. This is called um, a readme file. So it gives us some information about this package. And as you can see, the very first thing here is the installation um, 
or actually we can see the goal of emoji is to make it very easy to insert emojis into our markdown documents. Okay, that's pretty cool, but we have to get it installed. If you've never used DevTools before, we will need to make sure that you install DevTools just like this, or else, again, that's a one-time thing, so I've done that before. So now we can just copy this line of code and install it here. And pretty much the way this function works is that we just have to enter the repository name, which we can see it's the same as this repository name right here. Okay, so now, so now hopefully this will work. Okay, and yeah, so sometimes it will ask you if you wanna uh, update any packages. I'm just going to say none for right now, but feel free to update them. Okay, and now it says done. So now, again, remember we don't have, we can't use the install packages so we used this line of code instead. So now that we have it installed, we should be able to just directly load in the emo package. And now we can see it loaded in and didn't give us any warnings or errors, so that's a very good sign. Now to test this out, let's scroll down a little bit and oftentimes within these readme files, they'll have a little bit of code for you to test out how um, the package works. So let's just copy one of these lines, which is saying from the emo package, we're going to use this function and give us a face. Now let's see what this does. If I copy it, I think it just prints out a random face. That's what it looks like it's doing. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And that's a really great sign. We were able to successfully install and load in the emo package. So, yeah, so typically with my workflow, I, by default, I'll try to use the install packages, but if I run into an error, then I'll go straight to Google and try to find the GitHub repo. Okay, let's go back to um, the my blog. So now we've installed Tidyverse, we've talked about what to do if you're trying to install a non-CRAN package. We've loaded in Tidyverse, so now the next step is to actually work with Tidyverse. And before going back to our studio, I do want to introduce the idea of the pipe operator, which looks like this. This is called the pipe. If you use Tidyverse, you will quickly become very familiar with this operator. You use the pipe when you want to execute multiple operations in a specific sequence. For me, this really makes sense to think about the pipe as and then. Okay, so for example, let's say I want to do X and then I want to do Y and then I want to do Z. This would be equivalent to saying I want to do X and pipe, use the pipe operator, I want to do Y, use a pipe operator, and then I want to do Z. Z. Okay, so as an example, we'll look at some code. I have some code below, and we'll need to use the Palmer Penguins package because this has the Penguins data set that we'll be working with. And I'm just going to scroll down because this is the research question we will be trying to answer, so I'm just going to copy this just so we remember. So let's put research question. All right. Okay, so the first thing, of course, we have to do, remember if this is your first time using the Palmer Penguin package, you'll have to install it. And I know that this one is part of, um, is part of CRAN, so we can install use the install packages function here and just make sure to run that. And I'll just add it to my list of libraries up here. And you can, again, you can run all of them or I'm just gonna do control enter for, I'm on a Windows. And now we have this package loaded in. Once you've loaded in the Palmer Penguin package, you'll be able to see that there's a penguins data set so now if we run this, let's take a look at this data set. 
Now I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because you can see some of the variables got cut off so, because they didn't fit on our screen. But if I run it again, now they all fit. Okay, so here we see that penguins is actually in a tibble, which is kind of like a simplified data frame or maybe a convenient and easy to use data frame. And it tells us exactly how many rows and how many columns, the different variables and the types of variables. So we have factor, this is a double or numeric with decimals um, and integers. So this is, to, I really love tibbles um, and it, I typically work with tibbles on a regular basis. Okay, so let's see. Our research question is, what is the mean body mass? So we have body mass here. For female and male, we have sex. We have male, female, I, I will know that there's some NAs, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, Adelie penguins on Dream Island. Okay, so this is getting a little bit specific. So we can see we have Adelie penguins, but if we just look at the first 10 rows, because that's all that's printed out within our tibble, um, we only see this Torgeson Island. So I actually don't even see Dream Island. So one way to figure out what, what are all the islands and what are all the species, we can use a function called levels. And to use this, it tells us we have to actually put X, which is just the data and the columns that we are interested in looking at. So we want the levels of, we'll do species first. And now we can see there's Adeli, Trinshop, and Gentoo. That's really handy. And now let's do the same thing for, uh, not dream, it is island. And again, we see we have three islands, Bisco, Dream, and Torgeson. Okay, okay, cool. So that's just a couple of functions to give us a better idea of what our data set looks like. So now let's dive straight into using Tidyverse and the different functions and the pipe operator. So the very first thing we wanna do is start off with our data, so penguins. And now we immediately want to pipe. And whenever I'm trying to answer a research question, the first thing I do is I try to select only the columns or only the variables that I'm interested in for the specific question. So to do this, to, we will use the function select, which remember we saw this is part of um, dplyr because it's part of the data manipulation. So we'll use select, oh, and maybe I'll just point that out. You can even see select, it even says here in these curly brackets, it's part of dplyr. So that's really good to know. So for our research question, we want, let's see, what is the mean, so we want body mass, Enter, species, island, and sex. I believe that is what we want. And when I'm working with pipes, remember it's a sequence of um, commands. So I like to do one step at a time to make sure it's, it's exactly what I want and there are no errors or problems along the way. So you can see here, I just did control enter and it ran, it ran this, uh, two, these two lines. So all we've done so far is just reduce the data set down to these specific columns. Okay, and next, so, so I used the select function. So now I'm going to filter the data because remember I only want the Adeli penguins on Dream Island, but here, we have all of the species on all of the islands. So to filter, filter allows you to select the rows that you want, as opposed to select, which allows you to select the columns. So filter, now we want species equals a deli. So let's test that out. Uh, it's hard to see the difference because we had, we could only see the a deli before, but we can see 
there were a lot more rows before and we've reduced it down by quite a bit. Okay, so we want Adelie penguins only on dream islands. So this is where we add, we can add an and operator. You could also um, pipe in another filter, but if you're trying to minimize the number of lines of your code, we can do it this way, all in one line. So we can do island equals dream. And now let's run this. So now we can see we only have a deli and we only have dream and we only have a total of 56, right? 46 plus 10, 56 rows of data. So that is looking really good. Uh, a couple things to point out here with the filter function, you do need to use these double, the double equals because it's saying the species is equivalent to this character string, which is why this also needs to be in quotation marks. So if we tried to do this, maybe we forgot about the characters, we would get some sort of error. Um, now, if you run into an error like this, I recommend going through line by line. So we can look at penguins, make sure there's no problems there. We can look at the select, and then we can look at everything. So by troubleshooting it this way, we know that there's an error on this line. Um, and it even tells us a deli not found. So this might be an indication that we have to put it in quotes. Okay. Okay, so now we have, um, we have the data that we want. So now we have to answer the question, what is the mean body mass? So we have to get um, an, a summarized version of this data for both, um, for the total or the average body mass for both female and male. So first we will use a group by function and this will allow us to give us the results for both the female and male. So we're gonna group by sex. And then finally, now we can summarize, use a summarize function. And here we have to just give a name to what our output will be called. So we can call it mean body mass. And we can say we want to get the mean body mass. So, and that will be equal to, and this is where we actually have to tell it which function. So we want to use the mean and we want to get it of this, the mean of this column here. So let's take a look at this. So I think this might be a little bit confusing, but pretty much this is arbitrary, but I just named it mean body mass. So this is the name of the column here, but this is the important part where we're actually using the function mean and we're getting it with the specific column. So now we can see in our output, we get the mean body mass for female, male, and there are some NAs in our data set. So we can, um, we can actually just remove the NAs with one line of code like this, drop NA. And now this is the answer to our research question, right? What is the mean body mass for female and male Adelie penguins on Dream Island? So we get um, 3,344 grams for females and just over 4,000 for males. Um, so that's really awesome. So we used tidyverse and our different functions in order to answer this research question. And we did it really in just a few lines of code. So that's how, that, this is why I absolutely love tidyverse and piping makes it so, so easy. I will say that getting used to all of the different functions will take time, right? There's no way you can use tidy first for the first time and know what, the, what all of the functions are. However, these are some of the more popular functions. So after using Tidyverse, you know, for a few weeks or a few months, you should hopefully become more familiar with uh, a lot of the different functions. I think, oh, okay. So one other thing I'll quickly point out, I, I had a hard time getting, wrapping my head around this group by function. So I will quickly point out, we can comment this line out. Let's just say you totally forgot all about group by function. And now we ran this line of code. 
So this is interesting. It, we don't get any errors, but there's only one output. So what is happening here is it's just giving us the total average for all of the penguins. It's not separating it by male and female. But if we add the group by sex, now we can see we get it for both female and male. So hopefully that example kind of illustrates exactly what group by is doing. Okay, awesome. So hopefully you're able to follow along and let's just scroll down. And again, I go through this exact code on my blog. Um, uh, and here are some awesome additional tutorials that I definitely recommend. So I think I will save, maybe I'll make a third video just going through some tips about my workflow. Um, and I will post that soon. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. And please comment below if you have any questions or if you have any tips of your own. Thanks so much.